Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Advent Mudimba and thank you very much for taking time to watch this video. If you are new here, please take time to subscribe and to watch a few of my videos and comment in the comment section and tell me what you think about them. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. So on today's video, we're going to be talking about a topic which I really like and I feel like it's very important for everyone to understand this topic. So today's topic is God is your defender. If you'd like to find out more and watch this video, please stay tuned. Welcome back once again. So on today's video, we're going to be talking about God is your defender. You know how in life that there has been someone who has hurt you or talked bad about you or hurt your feelings or spread rumors about you, judged you, insulted you, belittled you. I feel like in life we've all had that one person. And you know what our initial instinct was? to defend ourselves, give them a piece of our mind and just show them that you're so wrong about me. You're wrong about me. I'm actually a nice person. No, I didn't do this. Even if I did this, it doesn't matter anymore. Like the natural instinct of humanity is to defend ourselves. But you know what the Bible says about that? It says, do not defend yourself. God is there to defend you. The only thing that defending yourself does is take up your valuable energy, your valuable time, you know, all of which you could have used to make yourself a better person, to make yourself better, to improve yourself better. But instead, you went and defended yourself to prove to other people that, you know what, I'm actually not as bad as you think. I'm actually a nice person, but you're refusing to see this thing. And, you know, to try and show them that what they are saying is actually not true. What you think, what you have told yourself about me is actually not true. What you're saying about me is actually not true. You know, I feel like we all as Christians, should take example in how Jesus lived. You know how Jesus came and he died for so many people. He died for our sins. He healed so many people while he was on earth. He healed blind people. He made blind people to see again. He healed people who couldn't walk and they could walk again. You know, all these things. Read in Mark 15, verse 3 to 5. And the chief priest accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. Then Pilate asked him again, saying, Do you answer nothing? See how many things they testify against you. But Jesus still answered nothing. So Pilate marveled. In this scripture, they accused, accused Jesus of so many things that he didn't commit. They accused him of blasphemy and so many things. The list is endless. But even though he was accused, he said nothing. Mind you, Jesus lived a transparent life. He never sinned. He never did anything wrong. He healed their sick. He healed the blind. He provided for them. But at the end of the day, they still accused him. But all that he said, he didn't even try to prove his innocence. He didn't even try to explain himself. All he did was say nothing. You know, it even goes on to say to, to Psalm 16 and verse 4, it says, Those who hate me without reason outnumber the hairs of my head. Many are my enemies without cause. Those who seek to destroy me, I am forced to restore what I did not steal. The scripture really says that some people are even going to hate you. They're not going to like you without cause for doing nothing. You don't even have done anything, but they just don't like you. They have no reason not to like you. They just don't like you, man. They, it even says that they hate me without cause. There will be so many people in your life that are going to dislike you just for being successful in life, just for having what they might have wanted. All you have to do is just sit still and let the Lord. In Jeremiah 51 verse 36 it says, Therefore this is what the Lord said, See, I will defend your cause and avenge you. I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry. The Lord says he's going to defend your cause. What this scripture lets me know is that God is going to take up my case. Even if people may speak against me, even if they may say so many things about me, all I have to do is stay still and let the Lord be my lawyer and, then let, and let the Lord to defend my cause. He says, I will defend your cause and avenge you, which means all you have to do is just let the Lord step back a little bit and say, God, I don't know what to do in this case. You are the one who created these people. You are the one who knows their heart. So I'm going to step back and just let you do what you do best because you know what I may not know. You know their heart. You know their reasons for doing these things to me. So God, I'm letting everything in your hands. It even goes to say in Exodus 14 verse 14, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. 
there's one thing that I understand in this scripture. It says the Lord is going to fight for you, but you have to be still. This scripture says a lot. It says, yes, the Lord is going to fight for you. You give your cause, your case to the Lord and say, God, fight for me. But you have to be still. God can fight your battles and you're still trying to fight your battles for yourself. You have to give everything to the Lord and say, God, I give everything to you. Fight my battles for me. I choose to be still. I'm going to let you work on my behalf, God. You know? Also, in Deuteronomy 20 verse 4, For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. You know, it even tells me that God, he goes before me. Because you have to understand that God has seen all these things happen. He knows what is going to happen. He knows what they're going to say against you. He knows that they're going to, 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 to hate you unjustly. They are going to not like you for no reason, just for being successful in life. They will dislike you for the littlest, littlest of things. It says that God will go before you and fight your battles without you even knowing about them. Because he already knows it. But all you have to do is say, God, I give it all to you. I know that you know what you have to do in this situation. You know their hearts, Jesus. You know why they are doing this to me. So God, I'm letting go and I'm letting you do it. There's this thing that I live by these days. I say, let go and let God. So you have to let go of everything and say, God, I'm giving it all to you. And another thing is that even in Romans 12, verse 19 to 21, he says, Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This verse says, it is mine to avenge. I will repay. It's not yours to avenge, which is what the scripture is saying. Leave everything to the Lord. Let the Lord fight his battle. Let the Lord fight your battle on your behalf. It is it's his battle to avenge. But it doesn't matter. The battle belongs to the Lord. It's not mine. So even if they may talk about me, yes, I know they, they expect me to come and avenge myself, to come and explain myself to them. But I'm just going to sit back and I'll say, God, take control of this situation. Fight my battles for me. I give it all to you. In Romans 8 verse 28 it says, For we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Sometimes you have to understand that some things have to happen in your life. They have to happen. They have to talk about you, yes. They have to say these things about you. And it's going to hurt I'm not saying that it's going to be an easy thing to hear people talk about you, to hear people say things about you that may not even be true, to hear people say terrible things about you and just sit back on the sidelines and watch them trample over you. But it says, let go and let the Lord. It says that it's my battle to fight. This is the Lord telling you. It says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. He says, it's not saying if your friend is hungry, feed him. He says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. So those people who are talking about you, when they speak about you, even in your presence, when you hear them talk about you, just smile to them, still greet them. Good morning. Hi, how are you? I hope you're having a good day. And when you do that, you will heap burning coals on his head. This is the Bible saying this, not me, please. It says, you will heap burning coals on his head. It says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You know, even if they do evil things to you, even when they say terrible things about you, still do good to them. Still help them out when they need help. Still greet them in the morning when you see them in the morning. Still greet them when you see them during your, during your day. Still say hi to them. And when you are doing these good things to them, you are heaping burning coals on his head. We, you have to understand that God wants to be your defender. He wants to fight your case for you. But he can't do that while you are still fighting your own case. In Jeremiah 51 verse 36 says, God says to us, I will defend you. I will be your lawyer. I will plead your case. He really wants to defend you. He wants to fight your battles for you. But he can't do that when you are still trying to win your own case. He can't do that when you are trying so hard win your case. When you decide like, God, I'm letting this go. I'm giving this case to you. You have to let go completely. 
You can't want God to fight your case for you and you are still trying to win the case on yourself. That's not how it works. You don't have to defend yourself. You have a defender. The Most High God says He will set your cases for you. Live with freedom. Live a happy life. When people come for you, just say, you know what, it's okay. You can talk about me. You can say all these things about me. Like I said before, when you try to defend yourself, all you are doing is wasting your valuable time, your valuable energy on people that are not even supposed to be having your time in the first place. You have to understand that if someone is meant for you, they will be for you. They have no choice. If God has ordained someone to be for you, they won't have a choice but to be for you. So if someone is saying all these things about you, you have to know that this, this person is not for me. So spend less time on them, if any at all. Keep your distance from them. Just continue greeting them occasionally. Continue saying, hi, how are you? But you have to understand they are not for you. God has ordained people to be in your life. And if they are supposed to be in your life, they will not treat you in a manner. They will not talk about you. They will not hate you without cause. They will not judge you. They will not insult you. You know, it's simple as that. Take a step back and let God. I really hope this video opened up your mind of, you know, when you're going through something and people are talking about you, when they're judging you, when they're insulting you, when they're belittling you, you just say, God, I'm giving this case over to you. Thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you very much. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you also liked it, please subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any videos from me. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time, guys. And please comment in the comment section. Tell me what you thought about this video and your views on this topic. Till next time, guys. See you.